and these things that used to bring in by right side movement you get big shape confusion first you get confusion every intellectual whatever brilliant he may be he is confused and the more confused here the more he he, he asserts himself because he is confused he is not sure of himself so he asserts this is the thing this is the thing i mean if it is so why should you assert it but he goes on asserting this is the thing then understand you now he is going towards lunatic asylum absolutely and the way he asserts goes on talking about it all the time that means he is not sure he becomes like a possessed personality when he explains everything through his brains that this is the thing this is correct we must all do this is what and he convinces many others who are confused like him they depend on him he becomes a leader because you see they are much more confused and they find somebody who is not so much confused outwardly they stick on to him and all of them get to war or some sort of a bloodshed or some sort of they want to see blood they become heartless passionless compassionless you can say compassionless loveless people the other movement is the blue side is the blue is the like the blue moonlight so for the romanticism starts you see sitting in the moonlight you see <laughs> the <laughs> idea start coming from lord byron <laughs> and they come into your in your attention then they be, it becomes very strong passion with you you think oh i'm still you see i have to find out my loves you see and you go on in search of your loves and this and these things do not really are giving joy they that's why so many poems have been written that love is the most painful thing is worse than death and all sorts of poems are written like that so why did you get into it I mean, it's already written down. Books after books. Still, why do you get into it? You are already warned about it. That don't go. After love, love is deception. Love is this, that. It is very temporary. It is for the little while. You get that. By chance, if somebody could stop at a point by marrying somebody who is sweet enough and realize that love. and marriage and all these things are in the center are like the fire in the kitchen are like the fire in the temple looks after it and doesn't overdo something about it then maybe that this may be utilized in the same way the right side movement of the sun line if people think that yes the sun is important we have to have sun in the house but you are not to become naked and insult the sun and get your skin cancer sun is not for your skin cancer but if you overdo it also it is dangerous a person who exposes himself too much to planning and doing that and doing this and doing all this can land up into very great difficulties so you have to balance that side also and this side and you have to be in the center in the equilibrium now this word equilibrium doesn't exist in our day to day life it exists only in the fiction or maybe in the so called scientific research but as far as human beings are concerned they do not know what is equilibrium is because of this the attention though after realization comes up still on the sides they just go down this side or that side according to your vrittis and when these identifications still act in them they are prone to go down again in their attention and again start bubbling out the same thing as they are now <clears throat> one has to become lighter in one's own mind 
and should think that we have dropped all that. Now why are we there? One should become lighter with all that load flowing out. Because you are here to raise your attention higher and higher so that you come up to a point where you become one with the attention of God. Already your attention is sparkled because through your attention you can see what's wrong with you, you can see what's wrong with others and you can see how far you are going with yourself. But the progress is retarded because you do not know that this attention is pure form and all that you get into this attention is a mythical stuff, is a myth. If you drop this myth gradually, treat everything as a myth and not depend on becoming unhappy or happy, just seeing the thing, your attention will take a flight and it will be at a much higher level residing there. Instead of that, every moment you go this way or that way, you see, it goes on like that and the movement upward is much less. Even in Sattva Guna, when you rise, you can go much worse in that condition also. For example, if you say that I am trying to be Sattva Guni, in Sattva Guni it is that you start seeing everything, discriminating through your understanding, not through vibrations, through understanding, oh, should we not somehow or other take out our attention from here? Should we not give up this? Should we be charitable? Should we go and serve the people? Uh, there are people who think, oh, we are going to do something great like your salvation army. See, let them be salvaged by themselves. I don't know what salvation they are going to be. So these ideas, ideas I am saying, of Sattva Guna can also immobilize you and can really freeze you down once for all. And that also can work in you in such a sly manner, or we can say in a such a secretive manner that you won't feel it. All these ideas of helping others, being charitable, let's have a charity association, finished. Once you work in the charity association, your attention is finished. But if your attention goes higher, say my attention is, I am only nothing but charity, I mean what am I? It just flows. You just become the charity. So the difference between a person who is a realized and a not realized is this, that the attention which was giving myth as reality to you is gone now, is gone higher. It can see that it is myth, attention can clearly see that it is myth and you can see that yourself and you can remove yourself. That, of course, I have to give you a push, no doubt, and I am working hard on that to give you a push. But you should also know that mythical things must be dropped out, otherwise you will not grow. All mythical things must be dropped out. And the best way to do it is to be in thoughtless awareness, because as soon as you transcend these three gunas, you become thoughtlessly aware. You have to cross Agya. Once you cross Agya, these three gunas, Absolutely, you go into a state where you are gunatis, you are beyond gunas. So you do not deliberately do anything, but it just works out. But analysis is one of the diseases of the West. What are you analyzing? What are you analyzing? You ask yourself. I feel like laughing at the whole analysis that goes on. <laughs> See, they'll sit down, take out a hair, splitting the hair into hundred, and great analyzers are sitting down there. They cannot even say how the chromosomes have that spindle action. 
and I mean at that minute level the things are worked out. They cannot say how a cell divides. What are they analyzing sitting down here? Now they have analyzed for a purpose, also done for God. Through their analysis now my things are recorded. Through their analysis I can go to the TV if they allow me any time. Because of analysis doesn't fit into me, they won't allow, they may not. It might be expedited. But say, for example, if you had not discovered these things, for example, take it like that, and the science was not discovered, your attention would have been at least better off. Because of science, your attention is also very much in confusion. So I don't know which one to praise, whether the science or the primitiveness. See, when you raised yourself to science also, you got to another extreme as usual. Till you burnt out your complete attention, you were not satisfied. I mean, if you had kept your balance in science also, it would have helped, but the balance was lost there. Give anything to human beings and they know how to make <laughs> the worse out of it. They'll go to the extreme. You give them a horse, they cannot go ordinary trotting or galloping. They must have a double gallop till they fall and die. Everything, you see, they just are on the run all the time. So first thing is needed is to steady down. And tell yourself that now all these mythical things I am not going to allow to come to my attention. All these things are j nothing but myths, but you are giving too much importance to myths. You are taking them bit so seriously. They are just mythical. Now, I mean, when you are realized, now you laugh at people who just go mad over, a, say, a moonlit night. All right? But ask the fellow who is doing that. He'll say, you are heartless, you have no feelings. <laughs> He'll give you a big poetry out of it. You go and see any one of these people who are riding a high horse, who are at the helm of affairs, and you will feel like laughing at them. But they will think that you are useless, you are doing no work, you are good for nothing, you are just wasters. So now for you, because you are enlightened now, is to understand that our attention has to move higher and higher, at a higher space. Now actually what has happened in Realization? Your Kundalini has risen and has come up. Just like you can say a small thin hair, one hair, And that has broken your sastra. And now the grace is flowing into you. But it's a very small movement that has taken place, of course, which is a very difficult movement, no doubt, but it has taken place. Now, you have not expanded like this. Your chakras are only pierced in the center. But the rest of the attention is still intact. Actually, it is so intact that you don't even feel that it is pierced. Now you have to expand that, open it out, so that more strands of Kundalini can rise. And your attention, which is in these centers, expands. By expansion it drives out all that is mythical on the sides. On every centre we have our attention, which is being enlightened in the centre, through this light passing through. But light is too small for the darkness that you have collected. Especially for people of the West, I would say, your confusions, you must get rid of them. 
but still you identify. Because if I ask you anything, how are you? Means what? Means you are still confused. All right? Confusion should go. One confusion was there that this is realization or not. I hope that's over now with you people. At least now you believe it is self realization. I had to tell people, no, I are self realized now, you are. Still they would jump up like Jack in the box, you see, they'll say, No, we are not mother. How do you say this is realization? We expect this out of realization, that out of realization, that will be flying out of the door if you are realized, or something nonsensical like that. Thank God these ideas have gone away. But when we are realized, there is light that has come in us. We have to grow it only by separating our attention from the myths. It's all mythical. I also play with you because unless and until you are sure, I am not going to give you a wrong idea about yourself. I want to see how far still your attention is moving, and I know, still you are not sure, still you are not sure of yourself. That's why the confidence is not there. First of all, you have to learn how to drive, then you are tested. There will be five stones put together, the distance will be only that hardly a car can pass through, and the fellow will say, you bring it zigzag, and you cannot do it. Why? That's how he makes you a master. The mastery of your attention will come when you will start seeing that it is all a myth that upsets you. It's all a myth that upsets you. Just throw it away. Just throw it away and understand that you are the eternal attention, that you are the eternal life, that only thing that keeps you away from it is ignorance, and the ignorance is too simple to understand that you have accepted myth as truth. Just drop it, it's all myth. You'll be amazed how your attention will rise, and you'll see all these nonsensical things which used to frighten you or to elate you will drop out and you'll just smile at it. And then only you are going to enjoy yourself fully, because your attention will be completely drenched into the bliss of Self. I'm saying you will, I say you are already drenched into that bliss. Keep it up. Now, how to do it? Actually, in every day to day life, how to kill the memory of the past? To kill the memory of the past is to have new memories. You must remember when you got your first realization. Always think of it. Whenever any such memory comes to you, you try to think how you got your realization. Any memory that is troublesome or even so called elating, you just try to remember how realization has come to you. When you feel aggressive about something, or angry something, 
just try to remember how you felt the joy of surrendering just think of that joy of surrendering of dissolving in yourself so the new memories must be built up if you start building up new memories then you will start collecting moments to establish a other moments which have such memories like a memory when you try to help somebody you raise the kundalini of someone now the problem would be when you will be raising the kundalini of others you will be in thoughtless awareness there won't be any thought and thought is the only thing which impresses but that time you can record the joy of raising the kundalini <coughs> if you could record the joy of raising the kundalini of others you will feel a new wealth of these beautiful moments will be accumulated and all those moments which were giving you confusion or fear or so called unhappiness and happiness will drop and pure joy will remain because now most of the experiences you have had are more of joy joy has no thoughts it's just just an experience pratyaksha that's why i said you keep your eyes open i hope you will understand what i mean by that may god bless you